Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another very special episode of Candid with RMT. And today I have with me my junior from school, from high school, not law school, uh, Sanjeevni Parjoshi. Hi, Sanjeevni. Welcome to Candid with RMT. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sanjeevni, talking about school and how we uh, sort of, you know, uh, did plays, uh, made scripts, uh, just uh, you know, uh, were with the theatre group of our school. Mm-hmm. Um, Becoming a lawyer and a barrister at law, and you me, um, theater was a big part uh, of all our lives back in school. Um, did that sort of give you that extra edge, that push, that assist, uh, especially in a profession like law? I think most definitely, because I believe theater makes you a well-rounded individual. Not only is it big for fueling your creativity allowing you a stage to be confident and play around um, but it also involves ethic you know you can't just be up and about and randomly my stage par aa gaye you know there has to be a plan there's a script there's a director so you know how to follow directions but you also know how to execute it yeah so i think so as you have already told the audience today we used to do a lot of theater in school but i think i was much more involved in it uh, during my time at st stephens uh where as a part of the shakespeare society not only was i acting but i was stage managing i was producing and even had the opportunity to work professionally as an actor briefly um with mr amir raza hussain so we were doing this play called once upon a murder and it was a tri state tour and i would literally create sets in every city that we went to going to the local markets figuring it out you know and i was acting yeah more than that i can organize my time more than that i have a script which i can follow mm-hmm. you know so i'm i'm quick on my feet so i think theater has been all in all such a big part of not only being um, a practicing lawyer here but also a barrister at law in the uk where my primary job is to just argue you know yeah um talking more about you know how do you sort of set up a uh set in a different city by actually resourcing everything through the local markets um i am firm believer of being resourceful and that skill is definitely transferable in any setup any organization Absolutely. if you're a resourceful person you can actually contribute to the whatever ecosystem you are in you are a thumbs up thumbs up asset um but yeah uh, you know being resourceful uh, sanjeev ji um you know how the profession actually sometimes gives us those uh, opportunities mm-hmm. but uh, we sort of sometimes shy away or just don't you know accept them with like open arms or gracefully um did theater actually uh, give you that you know uh, extra i would say um, edge or just that initiative capacity to like just you know go and take that risk i think it has definitely increased my risk taking behavior not just in the courtroom but also within my chambers so you know when a matter reaches your chambers there are several juniors yes. you want to be the first one there you want to be the first person saying yes sir i will do it chahe raat ke 12 baj rahe ho chahe subah ke 6 baj rahe ho and i feel like theater allows you as i yeah. mentioned earlier to be quick on your feet absolutely like that. absolutely ki i will whip up an argument i'll do my research but i'm ever ready to take on work yeah no well said uh, sanjeev me um moving on to your life in the uk mm-hmm. being admitted you uh, doing a three year llb uh, course there and then uh, coming to india and then practicing in india mm-hmm. um talk us through your journey uh, in 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 terms of you know how different the uk law schools are there from the indian law schools what exactly uh, is the sort of pragmatic approach that they have mm-hmm. and uh, yeah just uh, your two cents so um just i'll put it out there i haven't been to law school here so perhaps my comparisons are not absolutely accurate but my first degree was in history mm-hmm. um at st stephen so that is where i draw my corollary between an indian higher education and a uk higher education so i was at durham university where i did my llb after having finished history honors and i think the chief difference that i saw is self study so mm-hmm. 
in India, from what I understand, most law colleges require you to be in college for around six to seven hours, five days a week, to say the very least. That is not the case in the UK. You will have around say five hours in the week, which you'll have classes, and the rest of the hours are designated for self-study, which I believe was crucial as a lawyer. Because you're not gonna constantly have work. There yeah. are weeks, days, jahan pe kaam hi nahi hota. But you have to have that self motivation. Yeah. Ki mere ko karni hai regardless of work being there or not being there. So I think that way it's a more practical approach. Yeah. Now coming down to the um, you know the core uh, of the law degree in itself. Mm -hmm. So for the first three years, which is the entirety of your LLB degree in the UK, it's not a five-year degree, it's a three-year degree. Uh, you're only doing substantive law. So in your final year, you get to choose some electives. So you only have four papers and a huge dissertation to write, which has to be 10,000 words and everything. Yeah. So I feel like that makes you an independent thinker, you know, because you're not dealing with procedure right now. You're not saying, ki, okay, if something happens, um, how am I going to lodge a complaint with the police? What you're thinking about is only the law, which is okay. Let's interpret this law. Let's see how a judge will look at it, you know. Yeah. And finally, in your final year, you get to take on your electives. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that is a great approach because in the year after, which is when I did my barrister's training, I get I got to learn the procedural law. So I think I had my substantive law done and dusted, yeah. and then I did my procedural law all in one go. So I think that's a great approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's all integrated in India, which yeah. again like makes you multifaceted probably in another way mm -hmm. and able to churn out work at a higher speed. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this was the process which worked best for me because I think I am more of a thinker um, than, uh, and I take longer, I feel, to process things. So it was, a, it was the best choice for me. Um, your education in the UK was a uh, fully funded 100% scholarship. Yes. Talk us more about the aspect of scholarships and how, uh, through lack, due to lack of awareness, a um, uh, lot of people uh, don't get the opportunity uh, to go there and you know miss out on that. So <clears throat> my UK education is split up into two parts. So it's my LLB at Durham, and then it's my barrister's training program. And I was, um, you know, privileged enough to have been called by the Honorable Society of Lincoln's Inn September last year. My undergraduate bit was not fully funded. It was partially funded by my parents. And thereafter, during my, um, due to my performance in college, I would get certain rebates essentially. So if you top your class, you get some money, stuff like that, or you get books for free, etc. So I tried to self-fund during undergrad as much as was possible. But the second part of my education was completely funded. So I received the Lord Denning Scholarship from the Honourable Society of Lincoln's Inn, as well as a residential scholarship, which allowed me to stay at the inns and be one of the 12 people who are selected each year to do the same. Um, so that way my residence was paid for in central London, right next to the courts, living within the vicinity of judges and barristers, and my tuition was paid for. So initially, I was just, I just had some living expenses which I had to meet. And what I had done was I deferred my program and worked here for a year, so I'd saved enough to meet my living expenses there also. Which I believe is the best way to go about your higher education. Because the job market abroad, as we can see from the global economic scenario right now, is not the best. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say ki, aap bas koshish kar lo and ho jayega. Mm -hmm. It's not the case, you know, yeah. let's be real. So I believe unless if you have a clear vision that there is a job which is 1000% awaiting you, do not pay for your higher education abroad because it's just not worth the stream. You mm -hmm. don't want to take a loan, you want to take a scholarship. Yeah. There are several scholarships available. So like I said, this is a scholarship which the INS was providing. The INS is also providing several other forms of scholarships depending on which INS you choose. Second, if you are going for your master's, you can look at um, scholarships in India. So there's the MLAX Foundation, there is the Tata Scholarship, and there are several other scholarships which are only for higher education abroad, you know. And they're looking for people who have a little bit of job experience. Uh, like you must have heard of the roads. Yeah. So that's another great scholarship. You just need to be on your feet and be researching. And lastly, there are also scholarships available at the particular uni that you will be applying. 
So let's say you're applying to say an Oxford or a Cambridge, they have particular scholarships. It's called, um, I think it's the Pegasus program. I might be getting this wrong, which allows specifically for people from Asian countries to come in there and study law. Similarly, ex uh, programs exist in the US as well, but unfortunately I haven't had the privilege to study there. So I wouldn't be the best person to ask about that. So basically three avenues, look at your ins, look at um, your Indian scholarships and look at your particular university as well for scholarships. Right, so um, I was actually thinking uh, out loud, uh, you know, um, that there's not many, uh, uh, you know, websites or just uh, apps or I would say just in terms of collating all these scholarships and putting it out there so that, you know, people get the idea that it's a Tata scholarship for this university, this much amount, I say, okay. Someone somewhere should probably do something like this. I think someone can you, you yeah, someone like you can. Someone like you, <laughs> someone yeah. like you definitely can. Definitely, definitely. You know, you just gave me a good, good. But uh, that's a great idea. idea yeah, you we know, do that, definitely. That is something I also wish was prevalent at the bar, if I'm mm -hmm. being honest. Yeah. Because at the Indian bar, there are people who have qualified yeah. as barristers or mm -hmm. as solicitors or been dual qualified in general. Let's say they've gone to the New, they've cleared the New York bar or the LA bar, but no one is like talking about this yeah. I feel and that's really holding us back because India has it's growing as an economy so there's a lot of cross jurisdictional work yeah. happening as we speak not only in terms of say um, commercial work but there's extradition work there's immigration yeah. work you know and this is not your typical UN human rights kind of yeah. work it's legitimate work mm -hmm. if you have so as a barrister let me break it down to you I have the right to a right of audience before UK courts, which solicitors would not have. So solicitors can only work in the law firms, but I am allowed to argue in court, which I think is a big advantage, right? Because why should I go and only work in an office there? Why should other men can't argue The only thing which is stopping is is this jurisdictional issue. Yeah. So I believe given the amount of people who are dual qualified at the bar, it mm -hmm. is important for the leaders of the bar yeah. to engage more with yeah. the youth today yes. and to spread awareness regarding the same. Yes, definitely, definitely. And I would take it a step notch ahead and just like talk about, you know, since you have these uh, opinionated views about how the bar should be uh, actually more active and I have similar views and I plan on doing something you know positively in order to change that existing narrative uh, but uh, dwelling more on your uh, political ambitions uh, being a leader of the bar and a female strong uh, first uh, you know uh, female Odia lawyer who got uh, uh, admitted to the uh, became a barrister at law so I, I mean um, you know preaching is one thing when you just you know go ahead and like talk about this on different forums with different people you know this is wrong is it? but getting into that system and then actually changing things is a different ballgame altogether. Mm -hmm. Do you actually foresee yourself uh, one day taking that initiative to tell up, I'm going to campaign for myself as a bar leader and we'll see how we can actually make a change. I think I really, I'm very keen on yeah. bar politics and bar leadership, mainly because of two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, my father has also been a bar leader. Yeah. And I have seen the amount of impact he has had on those people who are, let's say, not from this North Belt, yeah. you know, who are not Hindi speakers or even English speakers for that matter. Yeah. And people who are genuinely, you know, first generation struggling for yeah. work. Uh, and I think my father has been able to help such people because he was one such person mm -hmm. when he came to Delhi in his uh, late teens, you know, he, don't, he knew no one. So I feel like he has done so much. So number one, he has inspired me to take on this leadership. Mm -hmm. But second, it's also that I luckily had the privilege to go abroad to see all of these things, learn these different systems, you know. Yeah. For example, during the bar course, we had training in advocacy, training in cross-examination, examination in chief, drafting, which I think is very important. Like this shouldn't be a matter of an optional course, yeah. but more so being trained by your ju lower judiciary people, Absolutely. by higher judiciary people, you know. Yeah. These are the kind of, um, if I were ever, I mean, I'm too young now in the profession, I'm a baby, but um, if I were to ever be a part of the bar leadership and bar politics, my core focus would be on practical skills at the bar of a junior advocate. 
you need these kind of skills to improve the efficacy of the justice system. Absolutely. You know, we're dealing with vulnerable witnesses day in, day out. Yeah. You cannot have insensitive lawyers doing their chief and cross. Yeah. They need to know the rules. You know, the yeah. judge can't be telling them, oh, aap aise nahi kar sakte. He could say, aana chahiye, kaise aayega? Abhi to hum kehne sakte ki, aapko pata aana chahiye. There's no training, there's yeah. no awareness. So I think these things are very important and ultimately, let, let's tie it back to theater, court craft yeah. is what makes you stand out as a yeah. different lawyer. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think those skills can only be taught by members of the judiciary, mm-hmm. by me- senior members of the bar to junior members. Mm-hmm. So I definitely see myself being a part of bar politics in order to play a small role, if at all, yeah. in helping bring about more awareness and education so we, we can become more skilled lawyers in general. <laughs> no, actually, you, you raised uh, valid points because uh, uh, training nahi hoti in uh, law schools in uh, India mein at least um, but uh, you know there are obviously uh, other uh, lawyers who actually go out of the way and actually conduct these uh, training workshops but that is also very uh, if you're teaching like let's say 5, 6, 10 years in the profession you already have that mindset that I have crossed it, cross I have crossed it, I have crossed it, so I will cross it <laughs> So that is very important to eat in law school. Exactly. So that is something that you know makes a lot of sense. And uh, the bar has a very prominent role, you're absolutely right, in, in ad- administrating those changes and get, getting you know these uh, courses, trainings, workshops, just like more practical hands-on experience. I think like Justice Chandrajivud has rightly mentioned mm-hmm. that if judges can go and get trained, yeah. then why can't lawyers? What's get stopping them? Nothing at all. So I think this is something I, I would see a leader like you take on this issue head on. And yeah. if I were ever to have the good fortune to be a part of bar politics, I see myself taking it on too. You yeah. know? No, makes makes sense. Um, mentioning uh, the Dr. Chandrajivud, yeah. you have clerked with him. Yes. And talk us more about your journey after coming back to India and how it was working. So just let's lay down this, like the um, practicalities of it. Yeah. So because I did my LLB abroad, I had to come back and take a conversion exam. Okay. So essentially you require five, five years of minimum education, including your LLB after your 12th grade in order to practice in India. Mm-hmm. Following which you take the AIB and get enrolled at the bar. For me, I went the three plus three route came back, um, that's when I started clerking with Justice Chandra Chu. Um, following which I um, took my conversion exams here. So it's six exams, six days, and it's basically your entire quantity, contract, Achha. everything, oh, okay. and the subjective papers. Oh. So you okay. go through that exam. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a fabulous time clerking with Justice Chandra Chu. I had the, I, I, I want to say good fortune, but it's going to sound morbid, of being um, on a death penalty bench when he had a death penalty bench before him. I was clerking then. Oh, and wow. I think that was one of the most eye opening experiences of yeah, my life. Oh, I can imagine. And which yeah. actually propelled me to get into criminal defense work. Okay. Because we were dealing with a case. Mm-hmm. which involved issues of caste, which involved issues with children, murder, rape, kidnapping. And the only reason someone had wrongfully been convicted was because of their caste. And because they did not get the criminal defense lawyer that mm-hmm. they required at that particular stage. Mm-hmm. The training that I received during my clerkship with Justice Chandrachud was that we must go through every paper. He was like, forget about the pleadings. Mm-hmm. Just go to the bare minimum cross me kya wata, chief me kya wata, kya evidence lai the. So to Supreme Court ke level pe, mm-hmm. hum police report par rahe, visa par rahe, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that really opened my eyes. So after that, I joined Mr. Siddharth Putra, who's a senior advocate in the Supreme Court, who again, a legend. I yeah. learned so much. That's where I learned research. Mr. Lutra is one of the finest scholars of yeah. his time, I truly believe. Absolutely. You know, and the manner in which he taught me, he, you can't just go to SEC and Manupatra yeah. and be he, done with yeah, it. Yeah, he mentioned that when I was interning there as well. You're absolutely right. Yeah, he, he, he will not only 
expect you and rightly so to see the AIR manual. Mm -hmm. He'll expect you to see for that particular provision of the CRPC, the old CRPC ka AIR manual also. Yeah. Which is so important today given the fact that new laws are coming in and now yeah. I see the merit in it. Like what a what a four-sighted man. Mm -hmm. ki nahi aata tha ki hum provision ka kyun dekh rahe. Hmm. But now I know because laws change like this, but yeah. the core remains the same. Absolutely. So I learned research there. I got to be a part of a lot of um, like cutting edge work, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, after that, I, since I deferred my bar chaining up until this year yeah. because I wanted to learn a little bit, mm -hmm. which is again, Fair enough. Fair you know, enough. something I recommend. Ki yeah. bahar se pehle, please do a little bit of work. Yeah. Okay, you Makes can sense. learn more Makes from sense. that Makes sense. So then I went back and I finished a year long um, barrister's training, um, which was intense because it's around 11 exams that you have to take at the end of the year. And uh, luckily I was able to uh, pass with a distinction and was called to the bar of England and Wales in September this year. Thank you. And after I was done with that, uh, I came back to who I believe is my guru, Mr. Lutra, and I asked him, you know, what is the plan forward? And he said, you must do trial work. Because if you are interested in criminal law, yeah. you have to do trial work. And accordingly, I took his advice and I had uh, joined Mr. Um, Kurana ever since. So I'm now working at the chambers of Mr. Madhav Kurana. And how has that been? Um, it has been a very interesting exercise. Uh, I believe I was so not in touch with what happens in trial courts and this is my folly for sure. Um, but honestly, you know, people really are very upset about going to places like Tisa Zari and all but I tell you, I really like it. And why do you like it if I may ask? Honestly, you know, when you're before the um, trial courts and the trial yeah. court judiciary, mm -hmm. they are much more willing to listen to you. Yeah. That is, yeah, they give you more time. They give you more time yeah, and sure. you feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah. You know, this is something I have seen. Just say, Tisa Dari court, me, you are not standing there, you are not You know, if you go to high court, you are not standing there. If you go to Supreme Court, you are not standing there. So I feel like just that. Even the physical proximity that yeah. we are in fact having a conversation about mm. the law. Yeah. It's not me just <clears throat> saying my lord and making submissions, yeah. but I'm having a conversation about the law with you and you are telling me that this is what it is very practically. So I think that puts you mm. at ease. Yeah, no, again, uh, like taking this proximity, you know, uh, listening, con conversing, communication, I would like again push it back to theatre. Yeah. And you know, somewhere in theatre, when you have, you know, that there's a dialogue happening. Yes. It's not just a monologue, and you know, there's like two parties equally and actively involved with each other, and you know, they know what they're saying and what's happening. Small, small things like proximity, you know, like uh, make, a big make a big difference. For I sure. remember my time. Um, so I had, I was participating in the UK Supreme Court moot, and we reached the finals, and it's just the most beautiful experience where you get to go to the Supreme Court and argue before this, a Supreme, a sitting Supreme Court judge who was back then um, uh, just as Lord Lloyd Jones. Um, so it was also a murder trial. I feel like everything has somehow revolved around criminal work but mm -hmm. it was a murder case and I was making submissions and it's just the most beautiful feeling. So when you're in courtroom number three of the UK Supreme Court, the judges sit at the same level as you. They don't sit above you. Okay. They sit at the same level. And this is the first time I was going to the UK Supreme Court. Yeah. And you know, you're at the stand and you're making your submissions. Yeah. And you're not looking up, you're looking directly at him and he's directly asking you questions. Wow. And we won that moot and I actually had won uh, best oral speaker at that moot. And Lord Lloyd Jones and I were having a conversation, you know, and I told him, I was like, I'm so confused. I thought that you are very You know, like, I genuinely did yeah, not expect yeah. that. And that's when he told me it's very important that we are sitting on the same level as you because at the Supreme Court level, what are we doing if not conversing about where the law ought to be? That's actually very deep uh, when you actually think about it. 
बिकॉज यू नो दिस ऑलवेज लाइक दिस इवन विद द गवर्नमेंट आई वे माई बाप सरकार हो गई या जज साहब वकील साहब ऐसे दैट यू नो आई वुड से एक्स्ट्रा रिस्पेक्ट बट लाइक दैट कलोनियलिज्म वाला जो एक फील है ना वो दैट स्टिल एग्जिस्ट एंड इफ यू राइट अबाउट दिस पार्ट वेर यू एक्चुअली लुकिंग डायरेक्टली विद दर्सन मेकिंग आई कॉन्टैक्ट एंड यू नो यू कैन you feel what the person is going through and sort of have a give, conversation have a conversation absolutely you know yeah i don't know if that's going to happen in india anytime soon though but i think we are taking steps forward i have seen a lot of judges in the high court and in the supreme court consistently say that let's deviate from this my lordship your lord and yeah, stick to the law yeah that is that is one ma'am. good yeah that is one good thing that has happened um theek hai i mean that is i mean every democracy i would say evolved democracy would take time in order to like you know sort out their affairs in terms of these three pillars but theek hai i mean this is part and parcel of the profession talking about the struggles ji sanjeevni hmm. um kya sangharsh ek uh, I, i would i would say generational law because you have seen the profession in and out right uh, ever since you were born right yeah so uh what are the different struggles of a generational lawyer a female generational lawyer practicing criminal law so that's a very um difficult and interesting question you've asked me thank you mm-hmm. i think firstly i want to be very cognizant of the privilege that i have and i am i know ki i had my step out the door before other people did i already know it but this is what I truly believe that as a generational lawyer, once you've put your step out the door and you've crossed through that gate and you've entered the chambers now, everyone expects more than what they expect out of yeah, yeah. other lawyers. Hundred percent. Now, whether or not you satisfy that expectation is on you. So that's where your struggle really yeah. begins. Because regardless of me having been a fresher, mm-hmm. I am expected to know certain things. Let's yeah. say not the law, because no solid senior of yours will ever expect you to know the law. But certain things about, say, client dealing, certain yeah. things about, say, court craft, mm-hmm. smallest thing like reading the cause list, which I truly believe is an art. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think these are things which they expect you to know, and they would not expect other freshers to know. Yeah. So I think it's a little bit more difficult to deal with those expectations, which, as in any profession, as they should, keep only increasing with time. Yeah. Them, you know. Yeah. So I think that is the specific struggle of being a generational lawyer, where you mm. feel a little bit overwhelmed from yeah. time to time. But um, I think it's also a challenge, you know, and yeah. you need to get on with it, honestly. Absolutely. And I'm not going to sit here and say, "Oh my God, it's so difficult." Mm-hmm. I think everyone has their own struggles. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, you can't. It's 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 not right on anyone's part to sort of draw a comparison between the struggles of different individuals. Uh, talking more about uh, carving out a niche. Um, Sanjeevni, in the profession, uh, as a uh, lawyer who is just starting out, uh, you know, um, for female lawyers especially, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, how difficult is it to carve out a niche? And um, when they do start, you know, start taking matters of let's say like um, child abuse or mm-hmm. like domestic violence or like uh, let's say any matrimonial discord, um, do they get typecast into it? And uh, then are they like forever? that lawyer you know so i think being a female lawyer in criminal work has a different challenge altogether yeah on a moral level if you're dealing with cases of say child abuse rape you will have a little bit of a i think most people will anyway also not just females any mm. you know good samaritan citizen would yeah but i think even more so as a female you get a bit You know, मैं कैसे yeah, बात करूं इनसे इनके अगेंस्ट एलिगेशन है जो मेरा बिगेस्ट नाइट मैन है लाइफ का सो आई थिंक दैट इज दैट कैन बी अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल टू डिस्टेंस दम सेल्स फ्रॉम दैट वर्क सेकेंड आई थिंक अ प्रॉब्लम इज रिगार्डिंग एक्सेसिबिलिटी ऑफ वुमेन इन कोर्ट्स स्मॉल थिंग्स सच इज हैविंग क्लीन वॉशरूम्स हैविंग टॉयलेट पेपर सैनिटरी पैड्स इन योर बाथरूम्स it's not a thing which is done so i think that makes it a little bit less accessible for women from a very practical standpoint um lastly i have had several experiences in child court rooms where i am the only female you know and i think that can be a little bit of a daunting experience because i remember one of the first times that i was arguing 
and it was only men in the courtroom the judge is a man the io is a man the complainant's counsel is a man everyone is a man okay yeah. and suddenly the io started shouting at me whether it be rightly or wrongly mm-hmm. i am not here to comment yeah. bahas to bahas hai yeah yeah but just that feeling of you being the only girl in the room and a room full of men shouting at you i think it gives you like an initial shock because you wouldn't have experienced it i yeah, hope yeah. not you know yeah, it gives you a little bit of a shock it initially does. yeah so i do think um these things can be a bit unnerving and something which almost no one can prepare you for but i wish people spoke about more yeah you know absolutely but absolutely yeah. you're right that women now in carving out their niche run the risk of being tagged I have seen a lot of people senior members of the bar who when find out that I've been criminal say pache kyun kyun kar rahe ho itne aur hain aap family law dekh lo you know aap commercial law dekh lo civil law dekh lo kya ye sab kar rahe ho you know so i think let's say a woman rightly so is passionate about say you know family law but she will definitely be type cast ki women are for family law so i think that is something which i hope is changing because uh, i am proud to say that i come from a chambers where and a criminal law chambers where there are more female staff than men men staff actually okay. so we have three female juniors and two male juniors that's great so i believe things yeah. are changing slowly but steadily um but i think it can only become better if more of us keep joining Yeah. you know cuz you need to be there i no longer want to be the only female in that court hmm 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 nay fair enough yeah fair enough no one wants to be you know isolated or just be put into a corner i mean that is that is uh, you know not acceptable uh moving on to uh, the final question of the podcast and give me and this has been so far a very engaging one um what are the advice and key takeaways for young lawyers uh, just wanting to take up law practice criminal law uh, sit for the uh, barrister's exam in the uk uh, come back to india practice look out for a job in the uk just 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 talk us through your back minus 5 7 years in the uh, in life mm-hmm. and you're watching this episode yeah and you want someone who is you know telling you about these things because you are in a state of flux या मेरे को ये करना है अब ऐसे करूँ जाऊंगी तो ये होगा वैसे होगा दिस टॉपिक सो माई की टेक अवेस वुड बी नंबर वन अप्लाई फॉर एवरीथिंग द रीजन वाई आई एम नाउ टू डे अबेरिस्टर एट लो इज बिकॉज आई रैंडमली सॉ द फ्लाई फॉर द स्कॉलरशिप एंड आई सेट अप्लाई करके देखते क्या हो जाएगा यू नो एंड हो गया एंड इट वॉज द बेस्ट यू ऑफ माई लाइफ so number apply for everything which comes your way don't mm-hmm. think ki oh boring hoga ye hoga ye sare decision tab banane hote jab aapko mil gaya hmm. you don't take the yeah. decision before i agree i agree so first have the bird in your hand yeah. and then talk about it mm-hmm. so apply for everything number 2 if you are looking abroad for your higher education self fund as much as is possible and by that i mean do not take a loan either mm-hmm. from your parents or from the banks yeah but get a scholarship you know and i know it's easier said than done yeah. but also there are very many more opportunities than one would imagine that exist out in the world and we indians as a race are so competitive and so competent that mm-hmm. people are dying to have us there yeah you know mm-hmm. um lastly as a female i would say um conduct yourself with a lot of dignity and integrity i think this is not often talked about but um it's okay to be acquainted with the realities of your society and know that there is more of a pressure on women to be professional than for men if a man gets angry in court he is passionate at his advocacy if a woman gets angry in court she is hysterical in her profession so i think it is very important for women to conduct themselves with dignity and integrity as is for any lawyer but even more so for women and i think those would be my two cents on what junior advocates can do and how they can help themselves become better well with that we come to the end of this podcast uh, thank you so much anjini for being there thank it was a true pleasure <laughs>